Police in France are outside the offices of a satirical weekly magazine, which is currently publishing cartoons featuring the Prophet Muhammad. That's a move strictly forbidden by Muslim law. The magazine, Charlie Hebdo, is publishing the images today, and the publisher is defending his decision. And when the government asks us not to do any provocation, we have the impression that three idiots who demonstrated in the streets represent all of Islam. It's the government who insults Muslims by saying that. You have to take them as they are. One has to mock them using humor, disarm them with humor, and not give them any credit. Well, turns out this isn't the first time the magazine has published cartoons of Mohammed. In November, the magazine's officers were burned in an attack after the editors named Mohammed as the guest editor. The editor of that French magazine isn't the only one using humor to combat hatred. Lots of people are using Twitter to diffuse some of the tensions surrounding that offensive YouTube video, that so-called film that sparked protests across the Arab world last week and prompted this controversial cover from Newsweek magazine. You see the title there, the headline rather, Muslim Rage, all in caps. How can we end it? Only problem, not all Muslim people are enraged, and a lot of them actually think the cover just perpetuates old stereotypes. Joining me now is Arab-American comedian Dean Obadala. Good morning, Dean. Morning, Carol. It's so nice to see you again. Nice to see you. I'm raging right now. You might not be able to tell, but I'm really angry inside. I am. I can't contain myself. I'm so outraged. <laughs> You're going to burst at any moment. I, unbelievable. All, <laughs> I'm fighting every part of me instinctually right now for this. Before we get to these funny, because some of these tweets are really funny, let's look at the Newsweek cover again. Sure. And tell me why some Muslims in this country are so upset about it. Well... Clearly, at first, it's a bad picture, right off the bat. I don't like the picture at all. I don't recognize anyone in that picture. I don't like that as, at all. Um, I'll be honest with you. It's not just Newsweek. There's been a sensationalism about the whole coverage of the protest that we've all seen. And it's not that the media isn't mentioning the small numbers of people protesting. It's sort of buried. For example, Indonesia, they had approximately 500 to 700 people protest in a country of over 200 million people. 500 people are getting all the press. That, and that's defining Islam in Indonesia. Lebanon didn't even have any protests whatsoever because the Pope was visiting and they waited till Monday to have protests. So it's not like there's uprising across the Middle East. You're talking about 500, 1,000 each country. And in Indonesia, a few months ago, 50,000 people bought tickets to a Lady Gaga concert. Who defines Islam more? The 50,000 who bought a ticket to Lady Gaga or the 700 in the street about the, the video, the, the YouTube film? Well, well, Newsweek magazine is standing by its story and its cover because that's a picture that was taken in Morocco during a protest. Sure. No, there's no doubt. There are protests. Look, we just on Monday had the one-year anniversary of Occupy movement. There were protests in cities across the country. We had 1,000 people in New York, almost 200 arrested. Would that be fair to define America by those protests across the country if it was that was whether we were defined in the Arab world or across the country? No, the world, of course not. Those are limits into who we are. The same thing in the Middle East. These are small numbers. People are going about their daily business in the Middle East. In the Muslim world, the businesses are open. It's not anarchy the way it's looked at. And I just wish the media would look at it a little bit more close and say, hey, this really is a small amount of protesters, some with a political agenda, let's be frank, that's part of it, mm -hmm. um, and some organically mad. Well, well Newsweek tried to do that, right? With this, Because it asked for tweets responding to the cover using the hashtag Muslim Rage. And people yes. immediately started using the hashtag to make fun of the idea that anything could send Muslims into a rage. So let's right. take a look exactly. at some of the tweets they received. This one says, sure. I'm having such a good hair day. No one even knows. <laughs> Hashtag Muslim rage. Another one, I don't feel any rage. Does that mean I'm not Muslim? And finally, this one, when you realize the person on TV who is a Muslim expert is neither a Muslim or an expert, hashtag Muslim rage. So there was this like onslaught of, of, yes. of humor on Twitter. And that's great. That, that's satire at its best. It's showing the folly of the Newsweek article. And, and not the whole article itself. If you read the article, there's some good points made in it. it. It's the sensationalism of the cover. And also just some of the media reports saying all Muslims are enraged. There's over a billion Muslims in the world. We had literally, if you add up all the protests, maybe 10, maybe 20,000 people. 99.8% were not protesting, yet they're not the story. There's no companion story. Muslim rage and there's limited numbers and the rest of Muslims going on, raising their families, going but, but, to work, but living this, their daily life. this goes life. a little deeper than that. This is, this is sort of saying that, you know, with humor... We, yes. can, we can combat extremists. Really? I think humor is a great way of undermining an opponent. I'm a comedian. I, I hold up stereotypes about 
about Muslims and Arabs in my comedy show, try to break them down. I raise political issues as well. I think you can inform people, and I think it is a, a much more effective argument sometimes than a straightforward speech. You're making people laugh, and they're thinking, going, you know what, that is so ridiculous, I'm actually laughing at it. So the idea of Muslim rage, people are saying things like, I won't, I can't throw a football around because it's pigskin, Muslim rage, or, you know, turn it, have some glow sticks, and it's Muslim rave. It's funny, it's humor, and it makes fun of the whole premise that all Muslims are mad. In fact, we're not. We're laughing, we're having a good time, and we're laughing at the ridiculous press that's sensationalizing the whole story. It's a hard story, or believe me. It, it's a challenging story with the protests are out there. I understand the media has to cover it. There are protests. It's just a little bit more responsibility. Uh, you know, I hate to use that term, but a little bit more from the media would be great on this. Dean, thank you so much for being with us. We appreciate Thanks, it. Thanks, Carol. Come back soon. Nice seeing you. Dean I Ovidal hope so. <laughs> Me too. Dean Ovidala blogs for CNN. You can check out his latest piece on Muslim rage turning into comedic rage on CNN.com. Surveillance video released this week shows Jennifer Aniston pregnant with triplets.